call again. Now we have two guest talk. The first will be from Dr. Kisur Raj Pradhan. He is a renowned LASIK surgeon of Nepal from Tilganga Institute of Ophthalmology. He will be putting his words to us on a realistic approach to refractive surgery. distinguished guests, my fellow colleagues, my friends, students, seniors. Thank you very much for having me here and letting me just put jot down a couple of words. And I'm going to talk about realistic approach in refractive surgery. <coughs> it's been really, really, it's, this has been a really great day. Like I've seen optometrists present such great presentations, a lot of research to a very, very high level talking about confocal microscopes, OCTs, and like, you know, you've really, really scared me now. I thought I'd, I would just come and relax and give a nice talk with all my friends, but then I've seen so many faces, so many new friends here, and your talks are excellent today. And you've made me a little nervous now, but anyway, I'm gonna just put in a little bit of words here. So I have a few of my colleagues, Dr. Sasha Dungel, he's, been, he's my colleague in re refractive surgery in Tilganga. Everybody knows Dr. Purushottam Dungana. He's been your colleague for a long time and he's been guiding you all. So when you talk about real, realistic approach, you know, when I, me, myself, I worked a lot with retina. So every time somebody would ask me, about refractive surgery, I knew very little, nothing, almost zero. In fact, what I would say is, all you optometrists over here, you all know much, much more than any ophthalmo ophthalmologist regarding refractions, <laughs> refractive surgery. So this has been my preference, like, you know, if you, we've had two or three conferences clashing over here, we have the pediatric symposium going on on the other side of the building. And then we also had the oculoplasty going on somewhere else. But I preferred to come over here and talk to you all. <coughs> because I understand how much you all understand. It is like so much higher than most of the ophthalmic surgeons. Please don't leak this up. They kill me, okay? <laughs> so when, say about 15 years back when I was doing retina, if somebody asked me about refractive surgery, I would say, no, 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 no. You can't do refractive surgery. You cannot do LASIK because you are myopic, you will get a retinal detachment, and when you put a lens on your retina, on your cornea, during the retina surgery, the flap is going to move, and you'll be blinded forever. That's what the concept was 15 years back and it still is the same concept. And I'm sure the optometrists here, you all know so much more. So, but when we're talking about the realistic approach, there are still so many myths that come up. Are we ready when somebody comes to us and talks to us in our clinic, are we ready to talk about refractive surgery? Are we ready to tell our patient, yes, you are fit, Yes, you are not fit. What are the complications? There's so many things. For me, I was not ready. There are still so many people over here. I know you're not ready. Why? Because we don't know so much. And today, I just want to discuss a little bit more. It might be too dangerous for the patient. You know, sometimes you think, oh, this is surgery. Why? You're okay with your glasses. You can carry on with your glasses. Why do you want to do surgery? It's too risky, your vision might go and then that's it for the rest of your life. And then some people say, oh, I'm already like, why do I want to lose my business? I'm already selling glasses. Okay, it might be too expensive for the patient. Or again, if there's regression or progression, you'll be back with glasses, what's the point of having refractive surgery? 
So many questions will come to you and you don't know whether you want to send your patient to the refractive surgeon or the refractive surgeon might be a quack. He might just say, ah, stop, everything is okay, don't worry, I'll, no problems, we'll just do surgery, we take your money, and the problem comes, and the patient will come back to you. You send me to the surgeon, and then you're worried, what, what, how are you going to face the problem? Okay, so, so these are all the questions that will come to your head. So we'll discuss a couple of things. So I'm sure over here I will not have to discuss about refractive errors, okay? We have myopia, these are the low order aberrations, then you have the high order aberrations. You all, I'm sure everybody knows everything over here on refractive errors. So, but the basic concept, like what if a patient comes to you and says, what, what is he going to do to my eye? So for myopia, it's very basic. You're going to flatten the center. You can just flatten the center with your thumb. You know, but that's temporary. You can flatten the cornea with a contact lens, orthokeratology, but that's again temporary. But what if somebody wants a permanent treatment? So then you can flatten the cornea by making the cornea thinner, okay? And hyperopia, you want to steepen it up. In astigmatism, you want to flatten the steep axis. This is the very basic concept. You can use any laser. People will talk about so many different things. People will talk about epilasic, ILASIC, God knows what all, but there are only two basic lasers. One is the eczema laser, which is used for all the different types of lasers and PRK. And nowadays is the femtosecond laser, which is used for smile. It's called Relax Smile. We'll talk a little bit more on that, okay? So the basic calculations, <coughs> I'm sure most of you have heard about the Munnerlins formula. So the Munnerlins formula works on the thickness of the tissue ablation or the amount of tissue that you want to reduce depends on the amount of treatment and the optical zone. The bigger the optical zone you want to make, the more tissue you have to remove. But you have to be very careful. You do not want to remove a small optical, you don't want a small optical zone on a large pupil. So the pupil is very, very important over here because you'll always have night vision issues, glare at night, driving issues at night, all that. But you cannot also limit your, you cannot push it too much that the cornea will weaken after surgery. So this is a video of Relax Smile and LASIK, okay? So Relax Smile is 99% of my patients, I do Relax Smile. This is one of the newer procedures where you don't make a flap, it's a very small keyhole, it's a very small keyhole, and you take a lenticule out. And in LASIK, you make a flap. And then you ablate, basically you're making the cornea thin, either in the center or in the periphery, trying to steepen it or flatten it. So that's a picture of the LASIK and smile. What actually happens, if you think about the cornea, 95% of my refractive surgery is in the cornea. So when you look at a cornea, the strong part of the cornea is the anterior part of the cornea. The anterior stroma, the Bowman's membrane, and all the corneal nerves are in the anterior part. So with LASIK, what happens when you make a flap, okay? you lose the strength of the Bowman's membrane. You lose the strength of the strong part of the cornea. And when you ablate, you destroy the nerves that leads to neurotropic dryness. So in LASIK, I'm not saying LASIK is bad because right now still, this is more than 30 million procedures are LASIK and over 1 million procedures smile. Smile is coming up. On the long run, the cornea is much, much stronger in smile there's less dryness. So I always prefer to do smile, okay? And, I, and I'm a consultant to Carl Zeiss, so. But now, 
There are still other lasers that have come up with smile. There's a new company called Schwinn.